Hello, welcome to this session on the subject design of machine elements 2, subject code 18ME62 of VTU. So in this session, I will be discussing on the gear teeth systems and the force analysis in the case of swerve gears. Coming to the law of gearing, the fundamental law of gearing states that the angular velocity ratio between a pair of gears must remain constant throughout the mesh. So, in order to maintain this constant angular velocity ratio between the two meshing gears, the condition is that the common normal to the tooth profile at the point of contact should always pass through a fixed point on the line of centers called the pitch point. So, this is the fundamental condition which uh, must be satisfied while designing the uh, profiles for the gear teeth. So, as we can see from the figure, the common normal uh, to the tooth profile at the point of contact should always pass through this fixed point and this fixed point is called as the pitch point in order to maintain this constant angular velocity ratio. So the commonly used uh, forms of the teeth for the gears are involute profile and cycloid profile or cycloidal profile. So all the standard systems now prescribe involute profile for the gear tooth. So this is because the involute profile basically satisfies the fundamental law of gearing at any center distance. So this is the one advantage that we have. and all the involute gears of a given module and pressure angle are completely interchangeable. So that is again an advantage and all involute gears of a given module and pressure angle can be machined from one single tool. Also the basic rack of the involute profile is having straight sides so it is comparatively easy to machine the straight sides. So therefore it is advantageous. Again, uh, any changes in the center distance uh, which might be caused due to incorrect mounting, it has got no uh, effect on the shape of the involute profile. So these are all the advantages of the involute uh, profile. Uh, so nowadays the involute profile is used for the gear 2. So there are three standard systems for the shape of the gear tooth or the profile. They are nothing but the 14.5 degree uh, full depth involute system, 20 degree full depth involute system and the 20 degree stub involute system. So in this 14.5 uh, degree and 20 degree represents the, the pressure angle. So out of these the 20 degree full depth involute system is widely used in practice and is recommended by the Bureau of Indian Standards. So the figure shows the basic racks for the three standard systems that is 14.5 degree involute system, 20 degree full depth involute system and 20 degree stub tooth involute system respectively. So this is when the number of teeth on the gear approaches infinity or when the pitch circle radius approaches infinity that the uh, teeth becomes a rack with the straighter sides. So for 14.5 degree involute system, the basic rack is composed of straight sides. So in this system, the phenomenon of interference occurs for this when the number of teeth becomes on the pinion especially becomes less than 32 for this particular system. So as we know the interference is a phenomenon of the tooth profiles overlapping and cutting into each other so which is not desired. 
so coming to the 20 degree involute system this one so it is also uh, similar to this uh, composed of straight uh, sides here the interference for this type of system takes place when the pinion uh, number of teeth on the pinion becomes less than 18 so we have a table for this uh, from the design data handbook table number 12.4 b from the design data handbook which gives us the smallest number of teeth that is required uh, to avoid the interference so that that is 18 for this particular case from the design data handbook and this is the most widely uh, used and recommended uh, uh, tooth profile that is 20 degree full depth tooth profile by uh, bis that is bureau of indian standards now uh, this has got uh, some advantages uh, because the pressure angle is increased here so the increased pressure angle uh, uh, it uh, uh, reduces the uh, interference in this case when compared to the 14.5 degree system also because of the increase in the pressure angle the tooth becomes uh, broader slightly at the uh, root part so this increases the load carrying capacity of the gear and also after that we have the 20 degree stub involute system the last one so in this particular uh, system the minimum number of teeth that is required on the pinion to avoid the interference is 14 as we can see from the design data handbook so in this case uh, since the length of the or the height of the teeth as we can observe from the figure this is 0.8 addendum is 0.8 times the module when compared to the uh, these two systems it is shorter so this type of teeth uh, it results in low production cost and it can basically transmit high loads when compared to the other systems but it has got some drawbacks that the contact ratio that is the number of pairs of teeth that is in contact that will be reduced due to this shorter part of the addendum and also vibrations may take place so these are the three systems of gear teeth that are present the module of a gear specifies the size of the gear tooth so if we increase the value of the module then the size of the gear tooth also increases so we have table number 12.2 from the design data handbook that is recommended series of modules in millimeters so we have three columns here first one is the preferred column as we can see here so it's always recommended to select the modules from this particular first column that is a preferred one if there is no other go then we can go, go for uh, choice 2 or choice 3 in the least cases table number 12.3 uh, gives the standard tooth proportions of the involute spur gaze so the various terms like uh, addendum, dedendum, tooth thickness, tooth space, working depth, hold depth, clearance and pitch diameter can be represented in terms of the either the circular pitch, small p, the diameter pitch, capital P or the module M. Generally if you see the last column, uh, it's convenient to represent these uh, terms in terms of the module. Uh, here we can see addendum is equal to m that is module, dedendum is 1.25 times m, tooth thickness is 1.5708 times m. So like that this goes. Next coming to the force analysis of spur gaze. So as we can see from this figure the two gear teeth are shown of the pinion and the gear which are 
going to mesh with one another so the reaction between the mating teeth occur along this pressure line and the power is transmitted by means of the force exerted by the tooth of the driving gear on the tooth of the driven gear so this is the drive driver this is the driven so now according to the fundamental law of gearing this resultant force fn should always act uh, along this pressure line so this is the uh, pressure line along which this force fn should act now the resultant force fn that is acting uh, on the gear teeth can be resolved into two components one is the tangential component f suffix t or ft and the radial component f suffix r or fr as we can see from the figure so this fn is resolved into two components ft and fr out of this the tangential component ft is a useful component because uh, it determines the magnitude of the torque that is transmitted and uh, consequently the amount of power that is being transmitted whereas if we consider the uh, radial component fr so it is nothing but a separating force uh, you can see the free body diagram of the forces acting on both the pinion and the gear so it is always directed fr is always uh, directed towards the center of the uh, gear so it's a separating force so there is no uh, uh, any useful uh, work from this component so it is the ft which is uh, useful for uh, transmitting the torque so the torque transmitted by the gear due to this uh, tangential force ft is given by uh, so we have the torque denoted by m suffix t or mt so that is equal to p into 60 divided by 2 pi n where p is the uh, power transmitted in kilowatt and n refers to the speed in a uh, revolutions per minute now this tangential component ft is acting at the uh, pitch circle radius so therefore mt can also be given by the tangential force into the radius so therefore you can write ft as 2 into mt divided by the pitch circle diameter d so we can relate the uh, radial or separating force with the tangential force with the uh, using the relation fr is equal to ft into tan alpha because tan alpha if we, if we take will be fr by ft same way we have the relation between the resultant force fn and tangential force ft so if you take cos alpha it will be ft by fn from the uh, figure that we already have gone through so therefore fn is ft by cos alpha so this is the relation between the tangential force uh, radial force and the resultant force next interference in uh, gears so this uh, refers to the phenomenon of a uh, tooth profiles overlapping so and cutting into each other or we can say it is a phenomenon when the tip of the tooth undercuts the root on its mating gear so this is not uh, desired in uh, gears so because it will uh, result in excessive wear as well as vibrations so therefore uh, in order to avoid this interference for the different uh, profiles 14 and half degree 20 degree full, full depth involute and 20 degree stub tooth we have the minimum number of teeth prescribed so the, on the see we can see from the table the smallest number of teeth that is required on the pinion for 14 and half degree system is 32 and for 20 degree full depth system it is 18 and 20 degree stub tooth it is 40. See, we can find out the minimum number of teeth by using this equation also that is uh, z minimum uh, is equal to 2 k1 divided by sin square alpha where k1 is a constant that is uh, equal to 1 for 14 and half degree and 20 degree full depth involute system and it is equal to 0.8 for the stub teeth system 
so if you are using suppose 20 degree full depth involute system so then it is always safe to assume the number of teeth on the uh, gay on the pinion as uh, 18 or uh, 20 so once we uh, decide the number of teeth on the pinion then we can use the velocity ratio to calculate the number of teeth on the gear coming to the velocity ratio in gear drives so it's defined as the ratio of the velocity of the pinion to the velocity of its mating gear so if if uh, n1 and n2 are the speeds in a, a revolutions per minute of the pinion and gear respectively and if d1 and d2 are the pitch circle diameters respectively in millimeters then the pitch line velocity of the gears of the that is the pinion and the gear are given by pi d1 n1 by 16 into 1000 that is for the pinion pi d2 n2 divided by 16 into 1000 for the gear so that should be equal so therefore uh, from this expression you can write the ratio of the velocity is n1 by n2 as d2 divided by d1 let's take it as equation number 1 so so for two gears to engage with each other both the gears should have the same tooth size that is the tooth thickness and the tooth space of one gear should be equal to the uh, to thickness and space to space of the other gears so therefore for the two gears to mesh with one another we can say the circular pitch of the one gear should be equal to that of the another gear so therefore if d1 and d2 are the pitch circle diameters as we have seen z1 and z2 if we take it as the number of teeth on the pinion and gear respectively so then we know that the circular pitch of the pinion can be represented by pi d1 by z1 circular pitch of the gear is represented by pi d2 by z2 so therefore this should be equal that is pi d1 by z1 should be equal to pi d2 by z2 for them to mesh with one another so that means d the ratio we can get d2 by d1 ratio as z2 by z1 that is the ratio of the circular diameters of the gear to the pinion is equal to the ratio of the number of teeth on the uh, gear to the pinion so let us take this as equation number 2 so from equation number 1 we have n1 by n2 is equal to d2 by d1 so therefore if we take combine equations 1 and 2 we get n1 by n2 is equal to d2 by d1 that should be equal to z2 by z1 so this is the equation for the uh, that we are going to use in the design of the gears so in designing the gears it is required to express the face width b in terms of the module so we have an equation equation number 12.5 f from the design data handbook which gives the uh, range of this face width from 9.5 m to 12.5 m so we have to choose uh, uh, a value within this range while designing the gears